Review time is the home for all things theme parks. Stay up to date with our content by subscribing and turning on notifications. When the Tower of Terror dropped into the scene at Tokyo Disney Sea in 2006, the iconic Twilight Zone theme was nowhere to be seen, and a new original story now accompanied the attraction based around an old cursed hotel in downtown New York, a wealthy adventurer, and a secret society that spans multiple Disney attractions around the world, which is essentially the Disney theme park's equivalent to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Though due to this park presenting the story almost exclusively in Japanese, many will unfortunately miss the in-depth story and minute details that makes this such an amazing attraction to experience. So join us on a guided tour of the Hotel Hightower back in 1899, where we reveal the story, secrets, and behind-the-scenes details of Tokyo Disney Sea's Tower of Terror. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. The removal of the Twilight Zone theme from the attraction. This was a necessity for the ride to go ahead, as the Japanese guests that frequent Tokyo Disney Sea have very little knowledge about the franchise, though it presented a challenge to the Imagineers in deciding what to theme the attraction around. Eventually, they settled on an original story for the attraction playing off the established society of explorers and adventurous characters which were already established around Tokyo Disney Sea. We've also touched on this in an earlier video which you can watch here. The show building cleverly recycled much of the layout and structure from the Californian version of the attraction, meaning that research and development could be focused on the interior theming and exterior architecture, which was heavily influenced by its placement within the American waterfront port of call at Tokyo Disney Sea. The hotel's design is based around Gothic Revival and Neo-Moorish architectural stylings, popular with American architects during the 19th and early 20th centuries in which the attraction's history takes place. The signature T-shape that all the towers support is actually a consequence of the immense school bus sized generators which sit atop each elevator shaft and run the tower mechanisms. Interestingly, the ride portion itself barely takes up more than 20% of the actual ride building, but an immense footprint and structure is required to support it. Behind the shaft on the same level that guests queue and load are a bunch of facilities out of view for cast members to use, meaning that no space in the building is left unutilized. Tokyo Disney Sea's Tower of Terror opened to the public on September 22, 2006. The story starts in the queue, where guests find that the Hotel Hightower has been reopened by the New York Preservation Society, hoping to showcase the incredible history of the building and the assortment of artifacts which Hightower had collected. Rumours through newspaper cutouts and propaganda regarding Hightower's demise in the hotel and the possibility that it's haunted can be seen around the exterior of the attraction. Yet the society merely plays this off as superstition and nonsense, and believes that Harrison was merely the victim of early elevator technology mishaps. As soon as we enter the lobby of Hotel Hightower, we are introduced to our main character Harrison Hightower III. Fresco paintings above the queue give us a glimpse into Hightower's personality, hobbies, and self-centered attitude. Each painting features Harrison assuming a stoic and heroic pose with his back turned to many dangerous situations, showing an utter disregard for his and others' lives. Harrison Hightower III was a collector of cultural antiques. Accompanied by his valet, Mr. Smedling, he traveled to every continent to collect his curiosities. Once he found an artifact he wanted, he would use any method available to acquire it including, on occasion, outright plunder. Harrison Hightower may look familiar to some Disney fanatics, and that is because his likeness is based around legendary Imagineer Joe Rohde, who even portrays the character in the photographs and live-action portions of the attraction. The lobby that guests enter is ornate and well-preserved, giving a glimpse into the history of the building. But in plain view at the end of the lobby, is an ominous old elevator shaft which lays in utter disrepair. The doors are warped and the frayed remains of the shaft's cable dangle freely. 
In plain view, you can see the damage and remains of the shaft which took Harrison Hightower's life. It starts the ominous foreboding which will permeate the attraction as you continue through. The exterior facade holds an interesting secret about this shaft. From the outside, there are four elevator shafts, but only three of them actually serve a purpose within the attraction being used by the ride's vehicles. The shaft second from the right is actually just part of the theming and vertically matches up perfectly with the lobby and Hightower's private suite at the pinnacle. Once guests go past this shaft, they leave the lobby behind the front desk and into a small room before the pre-show which is filled with images portraying Hightower. It is here that guests are given a brief spiel from the Preservation Society, introducing Hightower and providing more information about his last ever expedition involving the theft of the idol. Guests are then ushered into one of two pre-show rooms. It is within this room that we are given our first glimpse at the cursed idol known as Shuriki Utandu. It is sitting lifeless on a podium near a stained glass window showcasing Harrison Hightower appearing proud. This idol has a significant backstory that helps provide context as to where it came from and its intentions. Hightower was on an unsuccessful expedition with his assistant, Mr. Smedlin, in the uncharted parts of Africa, when he came into the care of a tribe that possessed the idol as its guardian totem. Hightower became infatuated with the relic and offered to buy it, but the tribe refused. Eventually, after many frustrating bargains, Hightower rallied his men who were with him and stole the relic by force. But the tribe's members just stood around staring at him offering no resistance to them stealing their idol. When he returned to America on December 31st, 1899, he held a large unveiling which revealed the idol to the public and paraded around as his bombastic self giving heroic depictions of his adventure. The party was a success and many attended, but Hightower left early to find a place in his penthouse for Shuriki Utandu. As he boarded the elevator to his penthouse, Mr. Smedlin warned him to give the idol respect, but Hightower refused and in an obvious act of defiance, smothered a cigar on the idol's head. As the clock struck midnight, all lights in the hotel went out and the party was plunged into darkness. Those outside the hotel witnessed an intense green light bursting out from Hightower's room and thousands of volts of green lightning arced across the entire building, shattering glass and hurling debris onto onlookers below and starting small fires across the hotel. Many heard the screams of Hightower, but when they went back to investigate, he was nowhere to be seen. At the base of the central elevator shaft lay a shattered and deformed elevator and all that remained inside was the idol. Back in the pre-show room, a member of the Preservation Society then gives a brief spiel before winding up a gramophone featuring the final ever interview with Hightower himself. This goes on normally for a short period of time until the room is plunged into darkness and Hightower begins speaking to the guests directly, warning them about the idol and talking about the fateful events of his night in the elevator, whilst transforming the stained glass mural to showcase everything. The show ends after the stained glass mural quickly shatters at the base of the hotel, where Hightower's elevator crashed, and the idol comes to life, looks at the guests, sneers at them, and disappears in a small dazzling flash of light. Whilst an impressive effect that almost always gets a reaction from the crowds, the mechanism is rather simple. In the brief moment that the lights dim, the idol is plunged into the stand beneath it at faster than freefall speeds. After the idol disappears, guests are then ushered into the vault or boiler room. The boiler room is themed as a secret vault which houses hundreds of Hightower's rare and valuable possessions that were previously hidden away from visitors and guests. Each artifact tells its own story, but if you pay close attention to the suspended artifact towards the back of the room, you'll catch a glimpse of the glowing green eyes of Shuriki Utandu staring back at you every now and then. The enormous vault acts as another queue that splits guests into their boarding groups for the attraction. The vault is split into a downstairs and an upstairs level. The purpose of this 
is to allow one level to load whilst the other is going through the ride profile, creating a seamless boarding experience that doesn't rely on having to have the shaft emptied before cycling with new guests. It also adds to the illusion that whilst you see people entering, you never see them leaving. After a brief safety spiel, it's time to get seated for your private tour of Hotel Hightower. As the usher closes the doors behind you, there is a violent flash of light before plunging guests into darkness. And as the elevator begins to reverse towards the shaft, the ghost of Hightower is warning the guests about the significance of the idol. In the top left corner of the room, the piercing green eyes of the idol can be seen and taunting laughter is heard. The mechanics of this ride are physically identical to that found at Paris in California, with guests loading into an elevator which acts as merely a vessel for the riders. This vessel is pushed away from the door on wheels and towards the ride show shaft where it is locked into an actual elevator and the experience begins. As the elevator rises, guests will find themselves in the private penthouse suite of Harrison Hightower. Past a hallway from Hightower's bedroom sits the idol on a pedestal which the ghost of Hightower then emerges to interact with. Hightower takes a cocky stance, but is stunned as the idol begins to charge, zapping him with powerful green energy into the elevator shaft behind them and plunging him out of view, likely recreating the night that Hightower disappeared. The room begins to fade as stars appear to fill the view, and the idol slowly turns towards the guests, and its snickering can be heard. The ghostly effect in this room is actually a Pepper's Ghost effect, a famous effect used in many Disney attractions. The hallway extends normally outwards from the guests with some forced perspective to make it appear slightly larger than it is. Though in the center of the room is a glass pane at a 45 degree angle, which if you look closely, you can see it on the ground. In an unseen room off to the side, the ghost effect is re-projected onto a scrim, which is then reflected by the mirror pane. The elevator at the end of the room is also re-projected on a scrim. The walls around the room aren't actually solid but are a fabric filled with fiber optics that allow light to shine through it when they're no longer illuminated. This also appears to be the final resting location of the spirit of the idol in Hightower, which has cursed the building as the windows in the back of this scene match perfectly with the portion of the exterior building above the destroyed and unused elevator shaft. This is also helped by the fact that at night, you can see the same green lightning shooting out of this suite towards the drop shaft, which triggers the elevator within it to fall. To the guests on the ride, this merely appears as green flashes of light, but from the outside, there is an intense lightning effect sweeping the building. The effect at first from a distance may appear random, but it is synchronized with the drops in the tower. Guests then begin to rise above the penthouse, further giving to the illusion of its cursed nature, to another room which opens to reveal just an ornate glass mirror. The guests in the mirror are then distorted in a green glow where the idol appears and causes the guests in the mirror to disappear in a similar fate to Harrison Hightower. In a flash, the idol then lunges at the guests and the drop sequence begins. Though many recognize the drop sequence on this version of the attraction to be much more relaxed than the others around the world, and there is a real reason for this. In most of the other drop sequences worldwide, the attraction starts with a sheer drop after the catalyst event, in this case being the idol lunging at you. Though in the Tokyo version, it actually jolts upwards and rises instead of performing an initial drop like the other versions. Comparably, this does make for a less thrilling experience. Though once you reach the top of the shaft, guests get to experience a spectacular view of Tokyo Disney Sea before being zapped by the cursed green lightning and sent plunging down the shaft. The elevator will bounce vertically around the shaft for a few movements before performing a final large drop. At the end of the drop, the elevator will return to its load-in level, now filled with stars and the glowing green eyes of Shuriki Utandu. 
The stars and eyes slowly fade as the normal shaft comes back into view. The door at the end of the hall opens, and Guess exit the attraction. Guess will exit through a gift shop that is part of the bathhouses of Hotel Hightower and features incredibly over-the-top murals depicting Hightower as essentially a god. There is also one of him enjoying the baths. Imagineers achieved a great feat by successfully separating the Twilight Zone from the Tower of Terror to add an original, engaging story that still possesses the same ominous feeling that the original attraction contains. Even though many regard the drop sequence to be far more tame than others, a lot of Disney theme park fans will still recognize this version as being one of the best iterations of Tower of Terror. But what are your thoughts? Does seeing this make you want to experience the attraction? Or if you've ridden it, how does it compare to the other towers around the world? From the home for all things theme parks, I'm Dominic from Review Time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next private tour. By the way, if you have a suggestion for an attraction that you'd like us to tour, showcasing the secrets, behind the scenes and story, be sure to let us know in the comments below. We'd love to know your opinion. You might get a cheeky little shout out for it as well.